Uh-oh. Did the poor little rich girl from Queens, the poor little rich girl who grew up in the Bronx. She said she grew up in the Bronx, but she turns out that she lived in the in the rich suburbs of Yonkers, all the way upstate, of privilege to a father, an architect. Alessandra Acasio Cortez, back in the news, back in the news. Did she did she did she misappropriate a million dollars in campaign financing? Did she coordinate with her super PAC against finance law? Well, I don't know. We're going to find out. I'm going to take a little deep dive, but I'm going to leave a lot open to a uh, suggestion or whatever. Uh, but there's a lot going on, and uh, it doesn't – it smells like a like a hit. Uh, that's what it smells like to me. All right, I'm going to – Conti's going to go on the record – the the hit against the uh, solid Con- Alessandra Ocasio Cortez, not in defense of her, but in defense of justice and fairness and truth. Right? It seems that it's a hit from the right or the left. Somebody's hitting her right on campaign finance law. Right now, they all fucking break campaign finance laws, all of them. So let's look at let's look first at what the allegation is against Alessandra Ocasio Cortez. <clears throat> Acasio Cortez and chief of staff could face jail time. No, <laughs> if it, that, for it to first of all, to, for that's the spin already, right? You heard, oh, she's in deep shit and she's going to go to jail. Well, to, to go to jail, the State Department would have to step in after a finding, a civil finding of inappropriateness. There's no precedence. No one has ever. There's no precedence, right, for, for any congressperson ever going to jail for breaking these campaign finance laws because they're very vague. That's first, right? Um, if their control over a pact was intentionally hidden, right, former FEC, FEC commissioner says, right? Yes, they were. They, the coordination was, was – it wasn't hidden. Right, let's just read a little bit. I'll, I'll tell you what's going on. Democratic Ocasio-Cortez and her chief of staff, Sakat Chakrabarti, Chakrabarti, I'm going to kill this guy's name, Sakat Chakrabarti, check her body, <laughs> obtained major control over Justice Democrats' pact in December 2017. I'm going to talk about Justice Democrats and a brand new Congress and the Young Turks, how it all, it's all one, it's all one big idea that stemmed from Bernie Sanders getting the knife stuck in his back in 2016. Jack Rabati, right? This guy, check her body was, was, uh, the somebody inside of Bernie Sanders's campaign. So these guys, these guys, are, it's all the same people, right? It's all the same people, right? So, so he can change, uh, uh, so check her body, um, obtained control of the pact in 2017, according to, archive copies of the group's website and their two uh, and the two appeared to retain their control of the group according to uh, corporate filings obtained by the Daily Caller right? if the election if the FEC finds that the New York Democrats the New York Democrats campaign operated in affiliation with the pact which raised more than 1.8 million dollars before her June 2018 primary it would open them up to massive reporting violations, probably at least some legal contribution violations exceeding the lawful limit. All right. So, right. So the, the pact can't coordinate with the candidate, right? So a super PAC can form, spend millions and millions of endless amounts of money, right? And, and, spend it any way they want, right? To, for a candidate, against a candidate, because Citizens United says money is speech, right? This is the barbaricness of the campaign uh, uh, system that we live in. But nonetheless, they all do it. That's the point, right? All the Congress and all the senators are deeply involved in the same kind of conspiracies to funnel money this way, that way, and the other way. Ocasio-Cortez never disclosed to the FEC that she and check, check her body uh, who served as her campaign uh, chair, controlled the PAC while it was simultaneously supporting her primary campaign. And former, FE- and former FEC commissioners say the arrangement could lead to multiple campaign finance violations. Yeah, that's the point, right? That is the point, right? Now, we'll, we'll, is it true? 
if the facts if the facts as alleged are true and the candidate had control over a PAC that was working to get the candidate elected, then the candidate is potentially in a very trouble, is in very big trouble, and may have engaged in multiple violations of federal campaign finance law, including receiving excessive contributions. All right? So it's not look, okay, so that's 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 one paper. Let's let's see how the um the Washington Post spun the story. This is interesting, right? This is more of a uh, tongue-in-cheek uh, approach. Representative, do, do first of all, does does the do the Republicans and the Democrats have an interest in shutting Alessandro Ocasio Cortez the hell up? The answer is yes, right? Because she's rocking the boat, right? This is she's 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 coming in there and and she's speaking. <laughs> you don't speak. You, you, you just take the money and do as you're told, right? So, so uh, Casio Cortez, chief of staff, helped establish two political action committees that paid a corporation. He ran more than a million dollars. That is the allegation. Brand new Congress, LLC, the corporation owned by Sakyat Check Her Body, was also paid $18,000, right? The arrangement first reported by conservative outlets, well, we don't know that for sure, left hidden who ultimately profited from the payments. Uh, sharp jocks prudence with Alcasio-Cortez's call for transparency in politics. She has called dark money the enemy of democracy. Stop right there. So the Washington Post is smearing her. Uh, saying that uh, she called, uh, she they're putting two things together that don't belong. She called dark money the enemy of democracy. Yeah, dark money is the enemy of democracy, but the way that that money is not dark money, it's money that came from the people. It's a people-powered campaign, right? And it's not corporate money. That's the dark money, the money that flows from corporations into super PACs. That's not dark money. So the, the, the Washington Post is misquoting and trying to create a conspiracy and basically comparing apples and oranges. Now, that's interesting because the Washington Post is owned by Jeff Bezos, Amazon. He takes money from the CIA. So it's, it's looking like, like I said, it's looking like a hit piece, right? It's a hit, hit piece. We're going to look at Hillary Clinton too, just briefly. And I'll show you some of how Hillary Clinton, Victory Fund, and all her super PACs were in direct collusion with, with Hillary Clinton. She was calling the shots to the super PACs. So the money that flowed to her uh, chief of staff corp, uh, staff's corporation have subjected the first-term congresswoman to critiques of hypocrisy. Right? So that's the allegation. Right? The allegation is that a million dollars flowed into a extra LLC and where that money went, no one knows because the, the laws evolving involving an LLC are much less than that of a uh, super PAC, right? So, so we'll, we may not know how the money was spent and maybe we don't want to know. Who cares, really? Right? So here's Hillary Clinton. And this is this is all of the fundraising tools that she she used. Right? There's Hillary for America. There's Priorities USA Action. You remember all these super PACs? Future Forty Five. Correct the record. I right? remember. Correct the record. Correct the record was was not in direct coordination with Hillary Clinton. Those were the fucks that were hitting the Bernie Sanders campaign people that turned against Hillary Clinton when. She cheated, right? And and that's and they were they were and they're the ones who said that that ultimately it was Russia, right? It was correct the record. If you want to look for Russian collusion and all the interference on Facebook, it was it was directly related to correct the record doing it. But that's that's not the point of this story. Here's how much money they raised, right? So there's total raised. Half a half a mil, billion dollars, five hundred sixty million dollars, right? How much of it? Large individual corporations, large individual contributions from corporations. Half, three hundred million dollars. Small donations, eighteen percent. I, I 
venture to believe that that number is much lower, just by nature. So, so here we go. Hillary for America. The the other one that you don't see on the list is the Hillary Victory Fund. Right. So the point is that if you were paying attention in 2016, money was flowing in, out, up, down. They were there was direct. The, you had the the super PAC communicating directly with Hillary Clinton, Robbie Mook, John Podesta. It was it's it's the the lines between where one begins and, and one ends is very gray, and it always has been. So the point is that if they're going to take down Alessandra Ocasio Cortez right in the beginning and knock her legs out, you've got to look at the at the Clintons. You've got to look at all Trump. Right, all of these people are involved in the same kinds of conspiracies in terms of collusion between them and the super PACs. That's why you got to get rid of them. You got to overturn Citizens United and go back to public financing of elections. All right. So here's here's her big one. Let's just look at that and, and we'll move on. All right. So here's the big one. The big take was priorities. Hillary for America allegedly was booked as a as a. Um, it was a, a campaign, but the biggest super PAC on the record, two, $200 million, was Priorities America USA. So here we go. So Priorities U- USA, founded in 2011, supported Barack Obama in 2012. It was the primary super PAC supporting Hillary Clinton. Uh, now, to say that it's not, it's not in direct collusion with each other is absurd, right? Barack Obama was... Pulling the strings for Hillary Clinton. Uh, fucking, J- what's her name? Uh, Lynch, right? Loretta Lynch, right? They were all pulling strings for for Hillary Clinton. And here's the super PAC that was helping to get Hillary Clinton elected. There's, there's massive, massive collusion. They were funding in and out of the DNC. You can find your own trails uh, for that. So, so... So going back to Alessandro Casio Cortez, is it that unusual for monies to be commingled, placed in outside contribu- LLCs? It's not uncommon, right? It's not uncommon. It's probably not illegal. And the big takeaway is that there's no evidence that Alessandro Casio Cortez broke her campaign promise of not taking big money, right? Corporate packed money, right? There's no evidence of that. What they're trying to they're trying to pin on her is because they all take the dark money, the you know the the ninety nine percent of the uh, uh, House and Senate take dark money. They're trying to pin it on her, and I'm going to tell you why because because she's gaining in momentum, right? She's gaining on them, right? So what is this? This goes back to 2016. There's two organizations, brand new Congress, and and um, what was the other one? Brand new Congress and uh, <laughs> uh, brand new Congress. It, it'll come back to me. So brand new Congress. What what the hell was the <laughs> total brain freeze and um, something? But let's look at brand new Congress while I look at that. This is a typical member of Congress, most likely a career politician, probably a millionaire. He doesn't have much in common with the people. Justice Democrats. <laughs> Sorry about that. So, so brand new. I just let me finish, and then we'll go back to it. Brand new Congress and Justice Democrats were two creations that stemmed out of really TYT. It was Chank Uger, Mister Potato Head, had this idea that they would run, uh, they would they would challenge the status quo, challenge the corporate Democrats in primaries. Right? It was Chank Uger's idea, along with. I think the secular talk kid, fucking, I don't know what his name is. So anyway, so let's check out uh, brand new Congress. You're going to see the connection. That's what I'm trying to point out. This is a typical member of Congress, most likely a career politician, probably a millionaire. He doesn't have much in common with the people he's... Notice the the rich, older white men in the diagram. And the, the voice is clearly a younger black person, person of color, a POC. Just an observation. Member of Congress, most likely a career politician, probably a millionaire. He doesn't have much in common with the people he's supposed to represent. But what if your representative was actually more like you and your neighbors? Like this. 
and this, and this. That's the idea behind Brand New Congress, a bold new campaign that gives power back to the people by putting us in the House and Senate to actually fix America's biggest problems. Brand New Congress is looking to run 400 people as candidates in a single, unified campaign across the entire country in the 2018 midterms. One platform, one term. Modern. Did you hear that? You hear what they're trying to do? They're trying to replace the entire Congress and Senate with one swift move. <clears throat> Amazing. Ima imagine that. You don't think that that would threaten the current House and uh, House people? Fucking <laughs> to say it, first of all, it was a joke. They didn't think it, it could take take root. But they got they squeaked seven people through. Alessandro Casio Cortez being one of them. So they're now a threat. So now their chickens are coming home to roost. They're being attacked. Organizing our energy system, healthcare for every American, a massive investment in high wage jobs, quality education, the things that practically all of the American people agree on. These aren't partisan issues, they're human issues. And we can't wait any longer to start working on them. Our goal is to win majority control of both the House and Senate. That's right replace our existing Congress with, you guessed it, a brand new Congress. No more politicians who put their careers and their bank accounts before the interests of the American people. Let's create a government that really is of the people, by the people, for the people. Visit brandnewcongress.org to learn more. So it's a great idea, right? It's a, it's a fantastic idea. Here's the kid. Th this is, so I just came back from... This is, this is uh, Sacra Check Her Body. New member orientation with Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. and He's checking her body. We were intending to go in just <laughs> learning how for me to become a chief of staff, for her to become a congressperson. We ended up uh, coming out this week with her having attacked Amazon for their new HQ2 they're putting into her community, right? She calls a neutron bomb of gentrification. And I saw... So, so he works... He was he was originally brand new Congress, right? And then he became the head of the executive director of Justice Democrats, right? And then when when Alessandro Ocasio Cortez took off, he became her <clears throat> campaign manager, right? So there's there's collusion between all three organizations, right? There's is it illegal? No, it's just they're switching seats, right? As they're growing, they're like, oh, you know, just trying to figure it out, right? That's really what's going on. But the idea stems from from this guy and the Young Turks, which I'll show you in a second. You'll see how it works. But uh, so, but but the other the other thing too is that the LLC is not brand new Congress. The brand new Congress is brand new Congress. And the LLC is a, is a, a spinoff of brand new Congress, brand new Congress LLC. So it's, it's, it's rather confusing and doesn't appear to be illegal, right? Again, the big takeaway is they didn't take PAC money, big money, big dark money. Saw her do a sit-in in Nancy Pelosi's office to fight for a Green New Deal. I saw her become an Instagram star, giving thousands of people access to this otherwise very opaque process of becoming a congress. All right, so that's who Check Your Body is, right? And here's, here's Mr. Potato Head. I have dramatic news for you guys. If I have dramatic news, I have to... This is when they were just getting the Justice Democrats and brand new Congress together. And look at the date. It's 2017. It's about a year ago. Well, uh, 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 in one short year, <clears throat> they squeaked seven people into Congress. So they're, they're a threat, as I said. They're, they're threatening the establishment. To yell it. Uh, so we have new numbers from uh, Just Democrats. So remember, we recently partnered up with brand new Congress. Uh, we'll start uh, reporting unified numbers going forward, including today. Now, numbers are always fun when they're actually great. So first, <laughs> how many supporters uh, does the combined group have now? Well, will you look at this? 217,651 supporters. Damn. So they So look at that number. That was this is the day they they launched and they got 217,000 supporters, right? Also, right? Raised, hold, hold, hold. Over a million dollars. They Already. raised over a million dollars. This is all in the first day, right? So it's no joke, right? So they went on to be something rather rather spectacular. 
That's the point. Uh, one million. He's got some other charts here, Mr. Potato Head. These are the people who are putting their forty-one thousand uh, money behind. Forty-one thousand donors. Look at those numbers, right? Brand new Congress and Justice Democrats came together because brand new Congress originally was that kid's brainstorm. Sex, check her body, right? Uh, was it was his brainstorm, and and then it merged with Justice Democrats, and <clears throat> before Chank Uger got kicked out of Justice Democrats for some kind of sexual abuse, he, he stepped down. He's still a, fa a founder of Justice Democrats. So you see how it's all together, how, how, how uh, 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 media is supposed to be separate from politics? No, it's one fucking big happy family, right? They were all in bed together. And uh, their actions as well. So by the way, Justice Democrats. There's one more chart I want to look at. 87 people have already. So that's how many people they nominated. All right, so. You get the point, right? It's you get the, that point. Here's checker body on uh, with Chank Uga. So if this ain't the revolution, I don't know what is. Yeah, I completely agree. I mean, everyone else is afraid of going that far, and it's not a time to be afraid of that. Yeah, I I, I think it might be that simple, guys. And, and I think that if someone just starts, and and here we've kind of started, right? We're on the road, uh, that that it it gathers up momentum because it's. What you guys might not see, but what Shoykat and I see, because based on the experience that we've had in, in politics, is that in Washington, there's a lot of breaks. It's not like not a lot of gas pedals when you want to go in a progressive direction. There's a lot of breaks, tapping the brakes. Like, but do you want to go that far? And I've now done many interviews since in this last 24 hours that we launched this. And the number one question I get is, but wait a minute now, are you really going to primary vulnerable Democrats? Yeah, that's the whole point. Part of the reason that they're vulnerable is because they can't, they don't have a populist economic message. So right there, you got to look. You, if you want to find out who the enemy of Ocasio Cortez, if you don't think it's her own party attacking, well, guess again, right? Because he just told you that that the, the function of Justice Democrats and brand new Congress is to challenge the prime through primaries to challenge the status quo Democrats, the corporate Democrats. So there, there lies your, there lies your problem. There lies your, your answer. So, wow, what a deep dive, right? Do we learn something about Alessandro Ocasio-Cortez? Do we just want to hate her? Oh, fuck it, I hate her. She's a socialist. She's a green deal. She's the wrong deal. She's the right deal. Right? She's the shit. Right? Whatever. Point is, let's stay grounded in the truth. The accusations that $1 million flowed out of her campaign into a LLC, right? Now, the other thing is that they're all super PACs, right? They're all brand new Congress and uh, Justice Democrats are technically PACs, right? So is Alessandro Ocasio-Cortez coordinating with the PAC? It's obvious, of course, right? Because the the... The director, the founder, the creator of of the thing is her campaign manager, right? So is there is there direct communication between the pact and the campaign? Yeah, it, of course there is. But the point is, as I showed you with Hillary Clinton and, and uh, the Hillary Victory Fund and the rest of them, they all do that. So if, if Alessandra Ocasio-Cortez, if they pursue this and her head rolls... All this, this, it, that's why it'll never get anywhere because too many heads will roll. There's too many dirty hands on this one. So that's my take. This is a, um, it's fun to talk about. It's she's under pressure. She's under fire because this is this is called compromising a politician. Right? This is you attack. Right? She's gaining too much steam. She's not listening to the status quo. She's breaking out in ways some people like, some people don't like. The point is she's breaking out. So you have this this situation that's becoming potentially uh, you know volatile for for uh, House Democrats and you know House Democrats and House and Senate uh, Congress people. And they're trying to knock her, they're trying to break her legs, basically, is what is the way I read it. Marcus Conte reporting.